that's one, two.
Okay. Up to everyone. We are live on YouTube now, and Chambers is unmuted. Has to do with avoid. Um. He's good for taking them. Oh, 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 they used to be all lined up together. Everybody, just so you know, Mike is alive now, so just, and it's very sensitive. Just, uh, just to let you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. you I didn't know it was Hawaiian shirt day. I thought that was the next meeting. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Minutes to approve. Move Second. Any discussion? Any questions? Otherwise, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, Lynn uh, and Mary Beth. There somewhere. Best. <laughs> you get me. Um, so I think we invited towns and villages back to talk about the sales tax, change, tax changes that we talked about last time. Um, I did bring extra copies if anybody is here from the towns that needs um, a breakdown of by town and village of what the impact would be. So I do have copies of that. Um, but basically, we wanted to talk about if the county were to enact a change in the gasoline tax, um, motor fuel, as well as home heating fuel tax. Um, so I'll just run through that similar to how we did it the last time, if that works. Um, so just a couple of, of highlights about how this works. As far as the motor fuel, the earliest we could implement that would be September 1st. Um, the county would change our sales tax charge from a percentage to a cents per gallon methodology. Um, and this change would not affect the city of Auburn um, as they are, they have a preemption on sales tax. So it would be motor fuel tax outside of the city. Um, how we would do that, the legislature would in, uh, pass a resolution to elect a cents per gallon methodology. <laughs> The resolution would need to be submitted to New York State prior to July 31st, and the resolution would need to establish a rate of cents per gallon of either 8 cents per gallon, 12 cents, or 16 cents per gallon in tax, and that resolution can establish a sunset. So typically the sunset would be at the end of a sales tax quarter, which is kind of like a month off, so that would be um, at the end of November. This year, the state is allowing you to elect a 1231 sunset. So the legislature would just have to decide what they want to do as far as the sunset for the, the tax. Um, the next slide kind of shows the effect. And so what we talked about last time is that, um, I think one more slide. Um, so what we had talked about last time was depending on what the legislature elects, it would reduce the county's <coughs> intake of sales tax, but obviously we share that sales tax with the towns and villages. Um, and so their sales tax payment would, could also be affected by that rate. So what we did in the interim, and this I think was emailed out, but if anybody doesn't have it, like I said, I have copies. So what we did, um, Really, the 16 cents per gallon rate would be on four dollars. We're already at 450, so we took that that option out. I certainly could calculate that for you, but um, we took that option out and we looked at eight cents and 12 cents per gallon and then broke that down by town what the estimated reduction in your payment would be. Um, and obviously, the county would take an impact of either 217.5 or 108.750. Um, so depending, and that would just be through December 31st. Um, obviously, if you set a sunset period after December 31st, that would affect next year's budget. So the county would get less revenue and the towns and the villages both. Correct. And that's the towns and villages impact. Right. So I don't know if you get this sheet as well. So like 
um, this kind of breaks it down mm -hmm. by municipality. Yeah. Um, and so that 217.5 would be allocated across all of the towns and villages. Um, so what we did was we took what that rate would be. Um, and then currently um, we are estimating what, so currently the sales tax, when we received our July sales tax payments, we looked at what the percentage increase over last year was. Right now we're at 3.1% increase over last year. So if you remember like a month ago, we were like 17% over last year. What the state does in June is they reconcile what businesses actually filed on their sales tax returns by location. So they estimate what percentage they think the sales are. So like Hugo County as a percentage of all of New York State, and they distribute sales tax based on that percentage for most of the year. And then in June, they do a reconciliation. In December, they do a reconciliation. Our reconciliation caused, caused our payment to go down significantly. Because it's the actuals. Because it's the actual. Um, and Lynn and I have actually talked through this and, and basically what NISAC is saying is that it's based on last year's number, the percentage that they allocate out. NISAC is saying that last year, New York City was actually down significantly. Their economic recovery was a little slower and they were down last year. This year, they're kind of back to normal. So it's shifted the percentage of allocation. So NISAC is currently saying that we should expect the same kind of performance for the second half of the year, which means we're going to be better than last year, which was very good, but we're not going to be significantly better than last year. So in dollars, that probably means we're somewhere between like 500,000 and a million over our budget. For this year, so our, it'll perform better by a million dollars than our budget. So it, yeah, in growth, you know, it, right now the projection is somewhere between five hundred thousand and a million that will be over budget for the county. Now, obviously, if we cut the tax as of September first, that might be different. But last year we were over budget by millions, like five and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's no crystal ball, right? Like, I don't know what the economy is going to do for the last six months. NISAC is taking a guess to say that they think it's going to be about the same. So that's what I'm basing it on, but I don't, I can't give you real numbers. I can give you real numbers for the first half. Um, so we based these calculations on what we know today. So if things hold true for the rest of the year, towns and villages would experience an increase in their sales tax compared to last year. But if we cut these tax, either the motor fuel or the home heating fuel, there's an offsetting de decrease for the rest of the year. So that's what this table is trying to show them by municipality. Here's what we expect the increase would be. If the legislature enacts this cut, that's the offsetting decrease. One more question, Hans. I, what, we tend to budget sales tax revenue fairly conservatively, but because we had such a huge growth last year, we weren't as conservative as we, I mean, we, we were more realistic. That's why I think, we, yes. I mean, I think we thought based on, you know, sales tax in 2021, yeah. it was pretty strong prices were not dropping. Mm -hmm. So the theory was, and there was still a lot of cash out there. You know, I've been, I've been talking to banks a lot recently. What they're experiencing now is that people have actually spent that stimulus money. So in 2021, a lot of people were holding it. Um, and I think part of the spend of that stimulus money is some of the people who were maybe a little borderline have now had to spend that on gas and food and et cetera, because prices have gone up. So that money has kind of pushed out at this point. Um, you know, I, I don't know. They don't expect a significant recession in the second half, but I don't know. It seems like the world's a little shaky right now, so I can't guarantee that. 
but I think we felt pretty confident based on last year's numbers, you know, budgeting the sales tax and, and it's still going to make it, I think it's just a matter of percentage over we are, but you're not, and I personally, and Lynn and I have this battle daily, right? Like she's the budgeter and she wants to make her budget. I want her to, when she budgets to be realistic in her budgeting, because I want our actuals to fall close because I'm on the actual side and she's on the budget side. So we're kind of a check and balance for each other. Um, so I personally like that sales tax is close. I don't want it to be $5 million off. Right, because that's how we manage our fund balance and our reserves. So, um, you know, from an accounting side, we want the budget to be as realistic as possible. Um, if that makes sense. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just, again, I had expressed prior my concerns about the impact, and I know you touched on it a little bit to the towns and villages. Um, have you had? I'm curious the dialogue. Like, have you had any? interaction um i have spoken with i believe two towns okay and their response was i'm interested to hear how the meeting goes <laughs> <laughs> um, and i think that ultimately the towns in this county who don't have property tax are the ones that maybe are more in tune with it because if you rely on sales tax to balance your budget and sales tax is affected, what does that mean? Because, and I'm just guessing, cause I'm not a politician, so I'm just guessing, but I would hate to have to be the town supervisor that has to be the one to enact a property tax when you haven't had one in a long time. That's, that's my theory. Cause you're probably not winning a lot of votes doing that. So, um, I think it's hard and I think those are the people that maybe have the most concern about it. If we look at, at the tax, most of the people, if on the motor fuel side, if we reduce the motor fuel tax and take into consideration the 3.1% increase that we're looking at right now, it's probably gonna come out fairly even or a little bit above. They're not gonna see a decrease over last year. But again, like I said last time, I don't know what these towns and villages have budgeted for sales tax. And villages are kind of in a different boat because they're not a December year end. So a lot of them are just starting their fiscal year. So I'm not really sure, you know, I can't really speak to their financial position. Um, just one, one follow-up question. Um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, towns and villages that have more, the more gas stations, the more impact mm -hmm. to the town and village. And, and ultimately, this calculation isn't going to take into consideration any of that because the way sales tax is allocated to the towns and villages is based on their percentage of the real property value in the county. So it's not it's not going to be well Brutus has a lot of gas stations and Cato doesn't so I'm going to allocate the, the change based on that that's not how it's going to understand mm -hmm. well now that we've had a, a month or so to you know see the effects of this I don't know if this is the right time to bring this up but I've absolutely turned I will not vote for this because I went through on it up through Baldwinsville yesterday in Onondaga County. And speaking of Cato, cheapest gas around, so come on up, even though they trash us on social media for not doing this. <laughs> 49 cash, 49 credit. Three gas stations in Baldwinsville are all 469 credit, 459 cash. The speedway right down here is like what, 458 credit, 448 cash. Quick fill in weed sport because we have quick fill cards. I just got gas there, 456, so 448 with my eight cents off. New County has the cheapest gas around compared to these other counties that have already enacted this. Now, what's that tell you? Am I saying that the Cuga County gas stations will do the same thing that these other ones did, which is pretty obvious, took advantage of it and jacked their prices? 
I don't know, but human nature is human nature. So right now we have cheaper gas prices than the counties surrounding us that have enacted this. So if there's a possibility that doing this hurts the towns because they get less of the tax money because we you know, share it with them, hurts us, and we wind up raising taxes to the constituents, they sure as the hell didn't save any money, did they? Because now they're paying more in taxes because we enacted a gas tax that <clears throat> have the cheapest gas anyhow. So buy your gas in Cuba County. Don't know what to tell you. I'm not going to be in favor for this. Sorry to waste your time having you guys come in here tonight, supervisors and whatnot, but maybe we should have waited a month to learn that it's just going to get taken advantage of because that's, I mean, explain it any other way to me, how the tax went through and now these same counties are more expensive than we are. So I'm not in favor of it. I won't vote for it. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a phone call from two of my town supervisors um, and they both expressed to me that they would not be in favor of cutting the motor fuel tax. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. So um, to echo what Andy said, three weeks ago, I think I came in here and went through all the gas stations. So um, because I have little time between 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., I drove last night, and checked them again, and we're still the cheapest gas between Wayne County and, and, and Oswego County who opted to do the gas tax uh, up to up to almost 20, 20 cents a gallon. So it's it's uh, this might be just by uh, coincidence that we were maybe slow on the trigger, but what's going on in those other counties where they did enact the gas tax and their gas is higher than Venezuela than than Cuba counties. I also did meet with the, uh, the town supervisors in my district and, and uh, discussed it. And uh, I will be voting no on this. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm very fortunate that I have a great working relationship with at least one of my town supervisors uh, who is here in the room because he had concerns about this conversation <laughs> he was invited. Um, I would like to offer him an opportunity to speak if it's okay with you. Mr. Sure. Chair, if I could, point of order, I'd like to hear what the supervisor has to say, but maybe we could. Do you want to finish like the home heating fuel piece or do you want to finish you, motor fuel? I, I just don't want to leave you hanging. So if there's, no, okay. however you want to do it, if you want to finish that or no. I just thought if we'll she go was to done. comments on the gasoline. Uh, tax. Anybody wants to speak on it who came? Uh, town officials, please feel free to. So. Okay. Mark, would you like? Sure. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Mark Emerson, Town of Men's Supervisor. Yeah. I'm going to agree with Mr. Dennison over there. I don't think we should uh, approach a sales tax. The only reason I would say that, are y'all familiar with New York State Open Book on the State Comptroller's Office? Well, it says in there, <clears throat> from 2020 to 2021, in the sales tax section, Cuba County received an extra $11 million. Also in the state aid, Cuba County received another, was it $8 million there? That I told you, yes. another $8 million. So overall for the fiscal year 2021, Cuba County's got $8 million sitting somewhere. I would like to know where it's at. That's off in the New York State Comptroller's Office. I don't know. That's where I did my research. Is that is that related to the gas tax thing that we're talking about now, Mark? Well, it's dealing with the sales tax, yes. I would think so. Thank you. You know, if the county made another $11 million in sales tax, why would you want to mess with it now? That's what I don't understand. Why would you want to mess with a sales tax if you're making the money? You got an extra eleven million dollars <throat> one year. So why would you want to? And Mary Beth, I that's something I wanted to take offline with you. Okay, that's Thank fine. You. I do have the paperwork. I can show you the. I printed it up and all that, and it states all the expenses and all the re revenue that the county gets. So I just like Mr. Dennison there. I'm not in favor of doing the sales tax. Maybe the fuel oil for the residents? 
okay? But that would be direct impact to the county residents. I'm thinking with the sales tax, you're giving the sales tax to a truck driver coming out of Buffalo, stops at the Port Byron fuel station on the throughway. He's fueling up. Is he getting the benefits of the sales tax reduction? I don't know. That's David. Yeah, Mark, uh, can I get your name and number? I got you. I know you, who you are, but can I get your number and I'll have Mary Beth and uh, Lynn give you a call tomorrow and you can go over that with them. I won't be around tomorrow or soon. I'll whenever, tomorrow whenever they can reach you. Yeah. Is that okay with you then? Yeah. There you go, right. sir. They're the professionals. They can give you the answer. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Sounds Thanks, good. Mark. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Well, anybody Thank you, else? Chairman. <clears throat> anybody else want to speak on the subject? Gasoline tax. Yes, Jim, Hotel, Jim Hotel in town of Brutus. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. I. Uh, I'm not in favor of making a reduction in the sales uh, gasoline sales tax. It's going to hurt the towns uh, with our budgeting budgeting process. If you reduce the sales tax to the towns, then we're just going to have to raise the taxes to the people in our township to balance our budget for the projects and things that we're working on. And we have a lot of uh, trucks come through the town of Brutus off exit. 40 through a, uh, they're going to benefit by reducing the tax. It's not so much the people in the town of Brutus is going to benefit. So I would uh, encourage you not to uh, support the re, uh, reduction in sales tax uh, to the towns and to the county. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? else? If not, I guess we'll continue on your presentation. So the other thing that we looked at was the home heating fuel, um, which is slightly different than the motor fuel. Same concept where it will take effect September 1st, as long as you adopt a resolution by July 31st. Um, we're currently charging 4%. It would remain a percentage charge. You can reduce it to any percentage all the way down to zero. Um, so you would just identify what percentage you wanted in your resolution. Again, it does not affect the city of Auburn because they have a preemption. Um, and there, there is, is not the same structure as far as the sunset. So you just be aware of having to bring that text back in the future if you so choose. So, so are you saying if the home heating tax was removed, and because it's currently 4%, if it goes to zero, then it, in order to get it back to anything, further action by the legislature would have to happen. Yes. And what is the impact? This is a bigger ticket item impact to the well, county. So, in I mean, terms of revenue. Yes, because again, we're looking at a longer span probably. Um, and the, the dollars are bigger. So if we kind of go, and I don't think it's up, but if we were to go to a 0% rate over a year, it would be a million 44,000 um, to the county. Not to the towns and villages. Also to the towns. Okay, so the consumer would feel the ease of this in right. what they pay, mm -hmm. but the county would lose revenue as and well as the towns and villages. And on the other side of the sheet that I gave you, it, it's broken down by municipality. Um, so, you know, we could certainly look at, at whatever people want to. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it, just to confirm, this can be done quarterly by resolution. So, which is to say, is it like the other one, which is to say we could enact in September? And then, is it like that? But okay, no, oh, yeah. you would have to. So you would enact it. Say you would pass if you pass a resolution in July, then the county attorney's office is going to submit it to the state. Right. Change the rate. Then, when you want to change the rate back, correct. Do another resolution, correct. To bring so, it back. Where in the other case, you wouldn't need to do the second resolution. Right. You wouldn't. It, there no sunset date. Yes. But uh, my question is. Um, it would not take effect until September. September first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, the quickest turnaround 
to if we, we wanted to, what would that be? Three months, a quarter? So I would assume you would have to wait till the next quarter. You have to wait till a, a state fiscal year quarter. Okay, so it is by quarter. And yeah. a 90 day rule applies and then you request a 30 day waiver. So, okay, so we could do it, say, through. Uh, so the quarters are September 1st, December 1st, March 1st. So March 1st, say we could do it through and uh, start the process again and have it reenacted by March 1st. You could. If, yeah. if the legislature so chose. Or possibly December 1st. I intend to introduce a resolution here at, at our meeting next week, okay? Eliminating uh, uh, the 4% totally. This never should have been done. <laughs> the state took mirrors off back, I don't know, 30 years ago or whatever. It used to be eight cents, okay? The state cut it in half and the county option was left. Cuba County chose not to do it. I've harped on it back when I first joined the legislature, uh, but we didn't have figures. We couldn't, you know, we didn't know what the impact would be. And now that we have clear figures, you know, uh, I think it's necessary that we do it because this is a necessity. This is not a luxury. You know, heating fuel is essential around here. Uh, we've got to do it. So we shouldn't never have taxed it. And so hopefully I'll have that resolution for next week. Yeah. Andy? yeah, I agree with Hans on this. I mean, the state did away with it, the county didn't. Will it have an impact? Yes. Well, then we figure it out because, I mean, we're going to tax you for something that you need not to freeze to death. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, but this is how government works. Everybody in this room knows it, including those of you on the computer, too. You know, it's easy to spend other people's money. But eventually, you got to tighten the belt a little bit and get rid of the BS taxes that just, you know, like you said, essential is a very good word. I mean, some people are going to argue, well, gas is essential too. Well, not if you live in New York City or not that much, because most people take buses and trains and, you know, but yes, out here it is. But it's not as essential as not freezing to death, I don't think, in January. So I have a question for you, Hans. Do you know if other counties? Um, have taken it, that tax away? I don't know. Oh, I was I just curious. It's like different counties have handled it differently. There um, are some here some that have, that have, that have zero. zero. Yep. I can't tell you off the top of my head. Yeah, I just was curious. There are. Okay, Jim. Thank you, Hans. Appreciate you. So the, this this chart, um, it, it, it breaks down the 0% for all the different towns and villages. And the bottom, it says Q County. Is this the distribution? Towns out of that one million. So that's the, the that would be the budget impact for the county. For the county. And then there's another million that's allocated across all the municipalities. There's another million. So there's, so there's two if million. If we were to add up all the towns and villages, mm -hmm. it should add up to a million forty four oh ninety five seventy two, because we, whatever we get in, fifty percent goes to the towns and villages, and fifty percent goes to the county budget. And that would be the million four forty. So five hundred thousand is our no, county. A million is our county effect. A million is the town and village effect. So the total impacts two two million two million eighty eight thousand. Right. Can I ask a can I ask a follow up question, please? So, um, what, and what was it, what was our overall budget this year? What, 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 164 million in total. Yes, not sales tax budget though. But just our budget. Our budget, our total operating budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As a consumer, um, last year I filled our tank 250 gallons and spent under $500. This year I frugally filled 100 gallons and spent over $600. That's easy math to do. If I can save, 4%, I guarantee I'll be spending it someplace else. And I pretty much guarantee I'll be spending it here in our county. So that's an attestation that we're not gonna lose my revenue. I don't know how much that helps people to think about that. Jim, thank you, Chair. So, so that 2 million represents 1.2%. Based on what you're just talking about, which is 
And if we have other right coming in over in the millions, it, it is kind of a swap or a trade off. But in, in agreement with some other folks, it, it's it's like buying groceries. You know, they, they, people can't go without heating fuel. Any other comments or questions for Mary Beth? Well, let's also keep in mind, I mean, this is my seventh year. I remember, I think it was around $149, $150 million budget. So we're up to 164 And all of this ARPA, I know this kind of doesn't, it, it does and it does, doesn't relate to this, but there's no such thing as free money. I mean, someday pay in the pipe for these billions of dollars that are just being, oh, here you go. Sorry, we shut you down, you know, get you back. Well, somebody's got to pay for that. So we're going to have astronomical. Our graduation party was Saturday, and it was kind of sad thinking what she's going to go through the next. 40 years when she's my age, because, you know, money ain't free. People just seem to think it is. So we need to keep that in mind, too, that there's a lot of taxes are going to either we're going to become frugal as hell, you know, good luck, uh -huh. or we're going to continue to watch this state deteriorate the population because people are going to get the hell out. So if we can save them a little something here and there before the pain comes, and it's an essential thing, like you said, that never should have been taxed in the first place. Oh. Any other comments? No, oh, okay. okay. I guess, thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I think we'll thank you to the supervisors that showed up or that are on. on this morning. <laughs> I guess I would entertain a motion to table uh, other business. Uh, WM. I would like three. to table. Back up, Patriots. Any discussion? There's no discussion on tabling. Okay. Right? There's no discussion on tabling, is there? Discussion on tabling. Right. Okay. So all those in favor of uh, the table? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Take care. Thank you. Isn't WM3 the treasurer's resolution? Um, I'm all confused. It, well, it's under other, other, yeah, other, other business. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because people were here, I wanted to get it gotcha. out of the way. Okay. Yep. Okay. We'll go back to a regular agenda finally. Like this. Let's go ahead. Uh, Jennifer, she hears. There you go. So you have my report in front of you. Um, I just like to add a little bit of an update on the auction and where we stand with the parcels and their closings. Um, so payments were due today. And um, of those, only one parcel did the bidder back out. The backup bidder wasn't interested. Um, so that will have to go to the next auction. And there's only another parcel left um, that has not paid in full, but the bidder has reached out to both my office as well as the treasurer's office with some extenuating circumstances. So we've granted them an extension. Um, but every indication is that they are going to pay. So all in all, it looks like all except for one parcel should be closing. Um, once this final parcel closes, I will submit a formal report to you um, with the official results of the auction and for each parcel. Any questions? Yeah, well, let's go ahead. Thank you, Chair. That parcel, do we know where's it where's located? Um, so that one, is located in Conquest. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope, that is not the one. Oh, it's still in Conquest, the one that the bidder backed out. Um, it's on Duck Lake Road. I have two questions. First one, did the ones that we, you know, like were sent to Lydia, me, whoever the other person to you, were those all taken care of squarely and bought back? Um, in my belief, yes, there's okay. discussion going on about one, but I don't know that I can speak okay. to that. And here. the second question, if you can't answer it, Fred probably can. 
for a parcel like that, can we just put it up for sale or does it have to go through auction? If somebody backs out like this and then we have to wait for the next auction, which is when I think I'm um, So generally we do one auction a year. Um, however, our auction year, normally the city will join in our auction. They weren't ready to do that. <laughs> So I'm hopeful that they'll have an auction later this year. And our auctioneer has said that they can put this parcel in if they do have that. We don't have the means to put it up for sale, Fred, if we had to. The county policy says it goes to auction. Yeah. That would be the next step. Hopefully the city will have an auction shortly and so we put back out. Paying the taxes for the next however many months until the city has an auction. Uh, there aren't any taxes because the county owns, owns the property. Oh, so it's... Yeah. If we could sell it, we'd you know, it'd be back on the tax roll. But we have to wait months to, I mean, do, we, do we have a penalty for a person who bids on something and then doesn't come through? So I can restrict them from bidding next year. Okay. This individual did not pay the down payment. If they had paid the down payment, we could have kept that as well. Okay. That's one of the drawbacks of the online auction. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other comments? Video? I just want to mention, Jennifer, thank you very much. Um, you worked really hard to save some folks uh, in my district, in our county. Um, and I really do appreciate all that you did and all of the legislators in this room who helped people who were not aware that they were facing this situation. So thank you. I would echo that comment. Anybody else? Otherwise, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot, Chad. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Dempsey is up. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. I just want to mention one more thing that uh, Jenny touched on and say again for, I think, I think the second or the third time, the auction was a really a resounding success. The county uh, has is going to net over a million dollars. And that so uh, it's it's really been a positive thing. We've been working on some of these installment agreements that you've mentioned before, and we're going to put that last one to bed here. Hopefully, very soon we've touched base with the people, and they're working on it. So that one should be taken care of as well. But uh, we can all be very proud of that. Uh, I know last year was a success, and I think all Jenny's hard work and everybody in both of our departments worked really hard on this, and it worked out well for the county. Any questions, comments? Good job. Thanks, Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, Mary Beth, you're back on again. I'm <laughs> older. You guys are going to be sick of hearing me talk, I think. Um, so I did send out my report um, just quick to add so I can add some good news to my report because I felt like it was a little negative. Um, we did hear today about our rebate on the Bank of America program. We're going to receive slightly over $92,000 in our rebate program, which is when we use the credit card or ACI payment method. So um, as much as we've had a little pushback from vendors this year about accepting credit card because they do pay a fee. Um, we're still doing pretty well on the rebate. Um, I have talked to Mr. Dempsey. Bank of America is now increasing our fees. So as that evolves, I'm gonna watch to make sure that the fees aren't exceeding the benefit of what we're getting from the rebate. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> um, but I know in my report, and I just wanna to touch on, we have had some recurring fraudulent activity in our bank accounts recently. So I just wanna address that with the group. Um, a big thank you to social services and to Brian's office for helping out with this because it seems to have been a little bit of a hassle, but um, every, pretty much everything has been recovered. There were a couple of checks that we did not recover the funds on. Um, the total is about $2,000 that we couldn't recover. And basically what happens is if we do not report the fraud to the bank within 24 hours, we lose the money. Unfortunately, with the volume of checks that we're issuing, you know, social services has two of their own bank accounts. They're issuing hundreds of checks out of there. I don't even have access to those software systems, so I can't track all of those payments. Um, so 
unfortunately, I can't check every single day and see what checks have cleared the bank and make sure we issued them and all of that. Once we identify that there was a problem in the bank account, we started working with the social services accounting department. And literally every day we pull a list of checks that have cleared and we match them with social services. So we've been able to catch it faster and we're getting the money back. That being said, um, you know, I've talked with Jeremy Gold, with Shireen, and we're, um, the bank is really pushing for us to push positive pay, which is a control system on disbursements onto all of our accounts. We have those in our main treasurer accounts already, and, and Brian's office has actually implemented that on one of their accounts. Um, we're just going to put it on all checking accounts at this point um, and positive pay. We let the bank know what checks we've issued. The bank, as they clear checks, matches it with our list. If something doesn't match, they come back to us and say yes or no, and we have to approve or deny payment. So. It's a little bit of a step, but it allows us to make sure that everything's clearing is for real. And, and really pervasively, like the, we deal with several banks, all of them are saying fraud is on an uptick and we really just have to be vigilant. So we're putting some more controls in. Brian's office has really been a good help in investigating where those funds have been going. So I think we've pretty much done everything we can do. But. Questions are all the banks 24 hours? Yes. We deal with several. Yes. Oh. Um, I would say that some banks are better than others. So, for example, the one bank account that got hit, they like I would have thought that if the same check number tried to clear twice, they would stop it. That bank does not. You could clear the same check number five times. It. Um, so I would have thought that would have been caught, but it wasn't. So we have to watch for that. It's happening in the private sector too. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. New credit cards today because somebody hacked us and opened the gas account. Imagine that, the gas <laughs> well, account. Well, East for Jesus. And one of the big board. problems is mobile deposit. So what happens is you can just snap a picture with your phone and have it deposit to your bank account. Okay. And then you take the same check to the branch and you cash it. So. That's, you know, it's just a tougher situation. And um, I mean, we all know that I was an auditor before. If I didn't have at least one case of fraud every year, I would have been shocked. So, I mean, it's not, it's not surprising to me, but we're gonna put every control on just to protect us at this point. <laughs> um, any other questions on my report? I, I don't want to solve your problem for you, but this sounds ridiculous um, that we have to do the bank's job to protect us. But is there a way that we can say that there will be no mobile deposits from a county check? Thank you. Unfortunately not. And that's, you know, that's the hard part. So I have to kind of like take the bank process that's going to protect it as much as I can. Well, I'm sorry, but thanks for doing that. <laughs> I'll be glad when we get the bank system in place because the manual checking every day is hard. So, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Thanks, Mary. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diane is next, I believe. Good evening, everyone. I hope you have a chance to review my report. I'll just ask if anyone has any questions. Very on, I guess. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we have just quick one. When do you anticipate these bill applicants to be brought forward? Or so hopefully, um, we have eight right now, five of which have been approved. Okay. So we're waiting for the other three. And then hopefully within the next week, we can start sending those out. Starting the process. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, we're down to resolutions. Raise me, uh, WM1. Any, what do you want to move it? Move it. I can it, Mark. Okay, any discussion on it? Yeah, <laughs> Are you still getting there? Lane's talking to herself. I'm going to talk to myself. It's just moving this the from a budgetary reason, the casualty and liability line, right? Is that kind of what we're talking about? Whose resolution is that? 
we brought that forward. So basically what happened was um, governmental accounting rules changed. Mm -hmm. So historically casualty and liability was paid out of the MS fund. So when you approved the budget, you approved a transfer to the MS fund. Now we have to pay it out of the general fund. So I'm moving it from the transfer line into its own. What was number. in there is moving the money to a different account. Yes. Okay. Yep. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Period. Uh, allocate insurance, insurance WM2. Move it. I'll second, second it. Second. Any discussion? Just to charge the appropriate departments for their share of what we can get reimbursed on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Carried. Thank you. W3. <coughs> uh, County Treasurer to fill a principal account clerk. Move it. Second. Any discussion? I do have a couple questions just for clarification. Um, you're actually until next year, I assume you're taking an existing staff, promoting them based on the reclassification to principal account clerk, but you are filling behind. So you're adding, you are adding a staff within the treasurer's department at this point in time. Is that, I, I just found no, my train because no. I'm trying to understand. Right. You're adding the staff, but you're saying that you have the money in your budget and it will be covered in 23 because one or more employees are going to retire and assuming you won't fill those. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, good question, actually. Yeah. Uh, we went, we've been working on this for the last month or so. We were, we were, uh, came to our department about a month ago, month and a half ago. One of our key people had decided that they wanted to retire and they referenced that they want to retire about next June. Okay. And so thinking ahead, and we're trying to uh, prepare for that because these three positions are vital to the county because they're intake, they're very technical positions, they take a long time to train and so on. So thinking ahead, we had a really uh, excellent person in our office, and we bumped, worked with civil service and Diane to bump that person up to the reclass, and all we're doing is refilling behind them. But, but it will be adding until next year an additional staff. Yes, the but there were some department. monies in the mm -hmm. department to help pay for that cost offset that. Right. But what's even changed since then that we just found out Monday of this week is that next the person that was going to retire next June that started this fall rolling mm -hmm. is pulling the pin in September now. Of this year. Of this year. So she's going to be leaving uh, September 30th will be her last day. So this exacerbates the whole problem here. And, and really um, this resolution that you're passing here tonight uh, is vital for us right now more than ever because she's gonna be gone here in a couple more months and we have to backfill these positions. And because of COVID and the situation at the state and civil service, they don't have tests available. And so it's a difficulty in backfilling in a person in there. And it could be as long as a year with a provisional hire to backfill that person. So it's it's uh, all the more important that we do this. Are you filling that vacancy when it rises in September? Yeah, we're, we're moving not in September because it'll take a while to hire the person. No, no. But within by hopefully before December. But you're promoting someone. Yes. Filling behind. Yes. Which will add a staff in the treasurer's office. That you currently have. No, it'll, it'll add a staff, but that position has already been in the budget. It just hasn't been filled, and and some and half of the year's pay is already allocated to that. Oh, so it was a budgeted position. Yes. Okay, that was what I was unclear about. Yes, I know, and it's I, we've been through that a few times, uh, Hans, and we had some meetings, and he asked the exact same question. So I figured because you were the one that didn't yeah. would, would would have reacted to the additional staff and then. Okay. But, but before we leave that, I just wanted to mention that like COVID has, has screwed everybody up, and I know that in all different ways, but the the situation with this hire is really important because it there's a real big learning curve in this position to get people up to speed with taking the money in the foreclosure processes and a lot of different things with the, the dollars and the taxes that come through. And we're not gonna we're gonna have as of today, I believe. I'm looking at where's Diane. We were talking about putting out for the hire, right? For so that people would know making it a, available <coughs> or, or very soon. 
Yeah, as soon as this resolution is passed, hopefully. And, and we'll be advertising for that position, but uh, we haven't um, been, uh, we're hopeful to be successful that um, very talented people will show up for this position and want to uh, be hired provisionally for it. You know, with the understanding they're gonna have to take a test down the road. So it's uh, it's kind of a very difficult situation, a dicey situation. Andy? So just for clarification, by the end of 2023, will your office be the same size it is now before these people retire, or will it have more employees? Uh, depending upon the hire. If we hire somebody, it will be one more person in there. <laughs> if we don't, I mean, it'll be the same as what we have in there. If we don't hire that person, it'll be short. But your intent is to hire yes. it. So to add the additional so, staff. Well, if you do hire everyone that you want to hire, <laughs> Will there be more people in the treasurer's It'll be the same. The same as what we have right now. Same people. All we're doing is we're changing the classification of a person that's in there. She's going to be stepping up, taking the place of the one leaving, and then we're just back going behind her. It'll be the same to answer your question. <laughs> You'll end up with the same number of people. Yes. And not to make things even more muddy, but <laughs> I, within a year, another person has told us they're going to retire. So we're going to be back in a year talking about filling that position. Yeah. I'll give you a year's heads notice. Just a budgeted thing. Yeah. yeah. I was I also, yeah, I was yeah, totally confused. Because right. your justification and the information that we received, that we received was not clear. Okay. I, it, uh, it looks as though you're adding a person right. to the department. And, but you're telling us that it's not an ad that because of the transition with retirements, you will end up equal? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I did not get that from the information yeah, that was given to us at all. So. And uh, just, you know, as I said, we started well in advance of this. I didn't think it was going to happen in September. We, I was thinking of way ahead in a year. And we sat down with Lynn in, in the budget office and Dave, and uh, we met with Hans well in advance and went over everything in detail to make sure everybody was on board with that because it's kind of clear as mud as you're asking these questions. You know? it's, a, it's a tough spot to but hire provisionally too. Right, That's and the, and the good news that. going forward is that this should set the department up for five plus years or so. So once we get these changes made. You're doing it almost for cross-training purposes. Yes. But you end up with the same number of employees. Right. In an ideal situation, this person would have had, held on till June. We could have tried to hire somebody. They train them for three or four months to get them up to speed, and it'd be a seamless transfer. But we can't do that the way that the hiring process is set up. So we're trying to you know, do the best we can to, to get ahead of it and, and prepare for the tax season and everything else that you know, will be a us. Any further questions? I just have one. That future hire, will you be in the same situation, having to move up and train, fill behind? No. Once that person is hired and, and, and they're on board, they'll be moving along. And then a person, a senior person that's been there for many years has, has referenced that she may be done in the spring and will just be filling that position with a, another new person, yes. All we're doing is replacing people. Right. Yes, I, I get that. I didn't know if it, yeah. if there was a learning curve with that one as well. Well, there's always going to be a learning curve for somebody coming in because they're not backfilled. See what I mean? Yep. You know, if, if if you would allow me to hire two or three more people and have them at the ready all the time, that would be the perfect situation. But obviously, we can't do that. Well, we got to do the best. Any further questions? Thank you. Not all those in favor. WM three. Aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody, so carried. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, WM4, this is creating a new position. Uh, grants, grants manager. Motion. I'll move it for discussion. I'll second it. Mark. Okay, Any anybody want to speak on yes. WM4? Chairman. Please. I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have a huge issue with this. Okay, grants manager position. We've talked about this, and you're the same as I have. And you talked about should we have a grant writer? We have this department who does their own grant writing. This department doesn't. They all, you know, blah blah blah. What 
is this just for finance grant writing or is this a grant writer for Cayuga County government? Diane? Government. This, this would be for the entire county. It's just they're, they're going to be under finance because of the overseeing that Mary Beth does with the grants and compliance part of it, but they would be working countywide. I want another so possibly helping any towns and villages. Okay, which which I think that's that's great. So when another department comes and says we need a grant writer, we can laugh at them because we now have one if we right. do this. Yeah. Okay, because this has been going on for the seven years I've been here. And, and Diane, from the job description, this individual, in addition to writing grants, will also, I would assume, be on the lookout for opportunities. Is that how it's... Yeah, you know, the idea is they would be helping research any yes, potential grants too. Because that's so part of the problem that we're potentially missing. Mm -hmm. Too little, too late. Right. Along with other departments who already have grants, they would be assisting with them to get it out. Okay, that's not that. Any further comments, questions? Not all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? Carrie, thank you. Health and Human Services today. Okay. Um, Health and Human Services, when all was said and done, because a couple resolutions were pulled before the meeting, ended up with uh, 13 resolutions. And one of those was a ledge resolution uh, that was there for information only related to an allocation of ARPA for, um, for youth development. But um, I do want to go over HH1, which we spent some time talking about um, HH1. It was originally written so that the, the uh, health department could hire two part-time lactation peer counselors in the WIC program, fully WIC funded. These are very uh, minimum, minimum wage employees, 10 hours a week, required to have them. Kathleen initially came forward and wanted to have language in the original resolution, whereas the public health director requests the ability to continuously fill these two part-time positions whenever they may become vacant at any point throughout the duration of the grant. So we talked a little bit about that open-ended language and we got committee approval to amend the resolution to say, because there's quite a bit of turnover in these two part-time positions, if, they, if the positions turn over within 18 months, she has the ability to fill them without coming back uh, to, the, to the committee for uh, approval. So that's how the resolution was amended that was sent out. But I just wanted to bring to your attention that if we put this resolution on as amended, it basically says that an exception to the county's policy stated in resolution 307-20 the public health director is hereby authorized and directed to fill two part-time lactation consultant as any vacancy may occur for eight for 18 months um, from the adoption of this resolution. If this passes, we are in essence not following the current resolution policy that we have enforced. Is that Rich? That's sort of how it is. And before we pass this, um, I wanted to bring that to the attention of the committee. And the Ways and Means Committee could say we're on a slippery slope. Why would we amend a policy that we have in place? And we would then potentially amend it to go back to the standard language, which is she has permission to fill these two part-time lactation consultants. And this resolution is good for the six-month period that, that currently is what this policy says. So I, I you know, Full disclosure, if we pass this amended resolution, we are in conflict with our current resolution policy. If you don't want to be in conflict with our current resolution policy, we'll just bring it back to say she can fill it. And that authorization is good for the six month period, like every other resolution that comes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an amendment to bring it back to the normal. Wait, well, there's been no motion. So it's not on the table. Yeah, it's not on the table, right? You would need a motion to consider the resolution and a second. Okay, move right. It, move so it, move it. I move it. Is there a second? Yeah. Okay. I move HH1. Is there a second? Second. Okay, open for discussion. I'd like to amend it back to the normal. Do you like to table it to Health and Human Services? No, I'm not tabling. I just want to amend it back to our normal. 
Six months. Six months. The way we have our rules. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll second. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, an amendment. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, any? I don't think the committee realized we were violating the accounting policy when we gave that permission. So I'm fine with it. I don't have a problem with the resolution. Yep. I don't want to go down that slippery slope because yep. we're going to end up going down it again. Oh, for sure. So. We would have gone it if it was open ended, too. Yeah. Right. No. Right. Yep. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I agree with that. We talked about this back in February or so. Of our, our policy yep. filling in that yep. it's a policy that we should review right with, and, with some really strict so that that these department heads who are working hard for us give them a little bit of leeway on on uh, some of these filling positions without coming to us every time and maybe that's something I, I, that but we I, didn't move that yet so yeah right. we, we probably need to look at that down the road any further comments on the amendment? If not, all those in favor of the amendment, aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Amendment is carried. Main motion? Well, that's been moved, I guess, so. Yeah, yeah. I just asked one more question, follow up question on the motion. Sure. Um, sorry if I'm being a stickler, but um, it's my understanding that WIC is not a mandated program, correct? WIC is not a mandated program for the county, but if you are a WIC grant recipient, then you have to have those have to exist. So if you accept, accept yes, if you're if you're providing WIC services and taking their money, and we are, these two peer lactation counselors are a requirement of the program. Understood. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay. All those in favor of HH one, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> okay, then um, I make a motion to bundle HH2 through HH14. Second features. Unless anyone would like. Wait, hold them. on a second. Okay. Are counting the pulled one? Yeah. Well, yes, there are. I'd like to. Okay, HH9 was pulled, HH12 was pulled. So when I did my total count of resolutions, I took that into consideration. So we could bundle HH 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11. Do you want to start with two? Oh, I'd like to start with two. You're right. Thank you. So I'll just make a motion to bundle two through 14 minus nine and 12 that were pulled. Does that sound easier? I'll Second by Beatrice. There we go. Yep. Moving now. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of uh, discussion, I guess. All those in favor? The bundle. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Yep. Yes, that's it, right? Yep, that's it. Okay, very good. Government operations, Mr. Peoples. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, government operations had 13 resolutions. At this time, I'd like to bundle two through 13. I'd offer them as a bundle. Uh, they've been through committee. Uh, they were supported. They're largely amending the, uh, the county policy um, and some, uh, you know, housekeeping motions. So I'll offer those two through 13 as a bundle, unless anyone would like them separated. I'll move that. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, discussion? Uh, I have constituents in my district who are disappointed in increasing budget for a college that discriminates against allowing people to come into the college or not getting the COVID shot. I needed to bring that up. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor of the bundle? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Uh, bundle is carried. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have one more. Uh, government operations, uh, one. It's authorizing the county clerk to abolish a part-time DMV cashier and create a full-time DMV cashier in the motor vehicle department. There was no motion. It's my understanding uh, the county clerk is here. She can elaborate on it uh, further if there's any questions, but the resolution um, needed to be tweaked a little bit and I would offer GO1 at this time. Is that second? 
I'll second it for discussion. Is it, are you offering it the same or was it a? It, no, the, so I'll offer it as revised in our packets at this point. Okay. Discussion? I was at the meeting and I think soon we were asked, it was unclear whether or not there needed to be money added to the budget because we're going from part-time to full-time. And I think Hans or someone uh, so yeah. to just uh, refer it to the uh, Ways and Means Committee so that those answers could be discussed and answered in this resolution. And it looks like you have gone back and identified where the additional funding for moving this position is coming from. Right. It won't cost anything in this year for that person to be full time right. from the time we hire to the end of the year. Her Lynn, Fred worked on it too, but just looking at all the numbers, that's the summary of it. This will be an additional half-time position in next year's budget. Yes, it will. This, yes. Well, it, so it's going this year, it'll go to full-time full -time. if it's passed. And then next year, it will be a full-time position. Instead of half-time. Right. Yeah. Any further comments? I got one, Mr. Chairman. So I'm going to assume because our numbers are increasing coming in. Actual the numbers have been steadily increasing, but they aren't up to what they were before, Andrew. So um, what's going on is we have had at least five part-time DMV um, cashiers, and no one ever stays because after all that training and time, they don't stay because they want benefits and a full-time and we've only been able to use them for the most part during the summers because of the amount of hours we're limited. So they work a little bit, you know, in January and February, but then comes the busiest time. Although we could have used them all year, we didn't because we needed to save them for summer. People go on vacations, it's busy, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's what happens. There weren't regular hours for a part-timer because then we would have had to sort it out all through the year and that just wasn't helpful to us. So yeah. we just have not, we've wasted more time and energy training people that never stayed. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so there is no increase to the current year budget, but are we increasing 2023 budget? Yes. Uh, yes, because right now we have a part timer at 22, and a full time would be step one is 42756. Thank you. Sue, so, uh, by the addition of this uh, to go full time, do you suspect that you'll see a reduction over time? Absolutely. So the comp time, that was the other thing. So during the busiest time, too, we have this vicious cycle of we don't have enough people, so we offer comp time and they don't take it in money, they take it in time. And then we have eight people taking more hours. And it, it's just, that that was a big problem too. It's probably the biggest problem we have. We have to get work done, the dealer work. Will, will you be, to Lydia's point, will you be able to reduce your overtime line because oh, this position in yes. next year's budget? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Any further comments, Heidi? Um, with um, the the increase of, of the full-time person, um, will you anticipate being able to go back to offering the public the ability to um, use the the clerk's office for passports, because I know that had been stalled because of lack of staff and time and ability to work with passports. So we're back doing passports. Um, that's on the other side though. That's on the other side of the lobby. Right. So it really doesn't have anything to do with the MP. Right. But we, we are back doing passports. And like I said, uh, May, 2023 is that time when everything is gonna change about domestic travel. So we are already gearing up. We had a regional uh, clerks meeting today I hosted and people are already thinking, how are we gonna deal with all of the people coming in wanting to be able to travel domestically to fly for the first, you know, and they're, they're gonna need either the enhanced driver's license or a passport. 
So they're going to have to get those documents way before. So probably starting in January, we're going to, and the, and the uh, state, by the way, the state DMV is advertising this all over the place, but everybody I talk to that comes in, they don't know anything about it. It's kind of odd, but we expect a big rush, just like years ago when, you know, travel changed with Canada. So um, we might end up asking to work some Saturdays, you know, to do passports and we can open both sides of the lobby and do some work. So, um, and we might have to consider just having appointments for enhanced driver's license maybe a month or two before this and maybe limit it to QG County depending on how busy it is because we certainly wanna serve our people first. I'm hoping it doesn't come down to limiting that, but that might have to happen. It just, you know, you never know how these things are gonna go. Any further comments? I have a question about the hours. When we go back to winter hours, is that just four days a week? It's five days. It is five days. Thank yeah. you. We're, we work right. We're open the same time the building is closed. Thank you. Is it further? Uh, you know, uh, those in favor of uh, Gov one. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nobody opposed. Curry, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Public works. Eddie? Public works at seven. What didn't we do? <laughs> yeah. We reworked it or something, right? The city has determined it does not need the parking spots in the upper lot, so there's no need for the resolution. Okay. So completely ignore PW7. Mm -hmm. PW1 through PW6 went through committee. All passed. That offer them as a bundle unless somebody wants one separated. Move it, Mark. Second. Uh, any discussion? If not, all those in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none. Carried. Traditional and public safety. Thank you, Mr. Andy. Chairman. JPS has 11 resolutions tonight. Uh, JP3 was pulled before the committee, so we'll just ignore that one. Um, I would like to offer JP1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 11 for bundle. They all pass through the committee uh, favorably. Motion? Move it. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, discussion? I, Mr. Chair, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, the uh, authorizing the creation and filling of position supervisor attorneys are budget of four, assigned council. That's JP4. Two. Two. That's we're forced to do that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and then right. I believe that that's Lord, one. Give us a 10 second, Lloyd. Uh, it's uh, under the rail herring lawsuit um, with 100% paid for salary fringe, computer equipment, whatever we need. So, okay, uh, the state will be paying for that. Thank you. It has to be an attorney, right? Yes, yes, 100% paid for. Okay, any further discussion questions? Not all those. Well, I just wanted to say thank you to the sheriff because we had a spirited discussion about the possibility of the creation of the sergeant, the deputy sergeant that's going to oversee the SRO program. And that, you know, we did talk about a, a way to minimize the cost to the county, which is to have the schools share some administrative costs because they're already paying for the special patrol officer in their school. And I'm not it's certainly saying that this position will be 100% reimbursed, but you did have an original conversation with the Moravia School District about at least talking about adding some administrative fees to the to the contracts that you have. And I you know, appreciate that. And they didn't seem to be totally reluctant at this point. They get the fact that if this position is gonna be supervising that work, that, that seems to make sense. So thanks for the follow-up. Okay, yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. I did have an initial discussion with them about this and I hope to have something to bring back next week so that we could possibly amend that resolution at your Full meeting with a certain percentage that we could tack on for administrative fees so that that's my goal that's acceptable mr chair go ahead oh sorry go ahead. please i got gotcha. <laughs> uh i just that's fairly common right 
in um, administrative costs. And well, that's what we were saying that yeah. you know, when we have contracts with agencies, they bill them administrative 50%. fee in. So okay. yes. Thank you. Can we, I mean, if you're going to do that, can, can we just, you know, not the word table, but can we move it to the full latch meeting to get? Refer the amended one? Refer the, yeah. To, so Brian gives us what we're actually voting on. going to be voting on then. Can we do that? Rather than go through this whole vote for this, then we got to. And amend it on the floor. Probably the easiest is mounted on the floor, right? You could do you could do it either way, either just pass it off to the ledge or pass it here and amend it on the floor. Kind of gets to the same thing. Because at the ledge we'd have you you're gonna give us what you want it to be, right? I mean, I don't care either way. I just thought that'd be easier. Yeah. If you yeah. want to go through the whole amendment thing, we can do that. Let's let's wait till so we gotta have a motion. So I make a motion to move it to the full ledge. That particular resolution. That particular resolution with what was it, six? No. No. If, if you vote on it, six. it was six. That's what I don't care. The effect is the same. Yeah. 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 We're moving it to the it's, If we pass it here, it's got to go to the ledge to be approved anyway. Yeah, but, and boy, said, I don't care either way, but I get I mean, I'll support you if you want to do it, but I think it gets to the same place. I'm going to, all right. I mean, I'm going to pass it, but I'm just thinking we're passing this and we're going to amend it. Why not just have on our ledge agenda that we're going to have like this what we're going to pass, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, yeah just I, I'm in agreement with Andy. I think it's much easier to just table it to the next meeting, let Brian make his changes, and then just vote on the next meeting. I think that's the easiest. But I'm not tabling it because that's no. not the right word. Yeah, it's not. You don't want him to wait 30 days. Yeah, you can't table, right? No, not tabling. Just referring. Just referring. It. referring it to the full ledge meeting. Absolutely. the actual amendment that we will be passing. Yep. Sure. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the bundle, G. whatever it was. Okay, I'm, I'm just looking for the X. Six, I think. Yeah, it was six. six. Authorizing for the deputy sergeant. Yes. So it would be amendment. I think maybe we're referring. Maybe what's the bullet? Referring, maybe referring. Maybe referring. Maybe referring. referring front. So. Referring. Refer it to the ledge. It's almost easier to vote on it. Than it yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it really is. All right, whatever. You should just go ahead and vote on it. And then it can be amended when you get to the full board when you have all the information. So we're doing JP 10. One, two, five, six, eight, nine. We're doing the bundle anymore. The bundle is JP 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 11. That's the bundle. Okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, discussion on the bundle. If not, all those in favor, aye. Of the aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, got uh, JP4, 7, and 10. We'll take them one at a time. JP4 um, is authorizing one part time clerk typist title. <clears throat> In County Probation Department, and I would hang, just give me a second here, please. Uh, it this was brought up in the committee. Um, it was passed in the committee with with a no vote, um, and the the no wanted a explanation, more detailed explanation of how it was going to transpire, um, and it this time. I would like to table this to uh, this particular resolution until the next JPS committee meeting if that, for more information, if that's possible, because I had several questions uh, with uh, Lynn Marinelli. I have not had the opportunity to speak with uh, uh, Jay. Well, I did speak with Jay. Um, and I'll suck at the table. Yep. Okay, motion to the table, uh, JP4. Anybody want to discuss it? Otherwise, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Sorry, okay, move. Okay, JP7 and JP10. Um, uh, the sheriff is here. There is going to be a, an <coughs> amendment to the resolution, and I will let the sheriff explain in better detail than I can. 
Well, do we have to move it? Uh, yeah. So I'll move seven for discussion. Second. Discussion. Discussion. Chair. So some housekeeping, there should be an additional resolve. I didn't put in there the amendments to our budget for this year. So simply amending our uh, sheriff's budget line for salaries and amending the revenue line to match. It's budget neutral, but I just need to put the budget lines and those amendments in there. I'll move it. Uh, and can I do that as I'll move it? What can I do what he said? Can you move that it be? Can I move what he yeah. said? <laughs> lines, yes. Thank you. I'll second that. Budget neutral. So discussion. just for discussion. So we're moving it as what Brian's amending it to. We gotta do the amendment first and then we'll then we'll vote on it. But I mean we just yes, I mean, but we just did a first and a second to do what you're amending it to. Right. Making the budget neutral. Right. Yes. Okay. So I so I need to to amend the budget line for our salaries full time on the sheriff's side to be twenty seven thousand dollars. Then I also need to amend our budget line for revenue from schools also for $27,000 okay. and um, to change treasurer to finance directors to make sure that it's any further questions on the amendment. If not, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Carried also. Uh, okay, now back to the main motion, right? As amended. As amended. I'll move that as amended. Any questions or comments? There was a second, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nobody opposed. Carry, thank you. JP 10 and will be the same thing. Uh, I'll let the sheriff elaborate on that. I'll exactly. move it for discussion. I'll second it for discussion. Exact same amendment to JP 10. Anybody else want to do it this time? <laughs> I'll move the amended. What he said. I second. Okay. Second. <laughs> this is all just to make sure you have the money and the revenue included in your budget for these new positions or the right. increase in one of the positions and the creation of another. Correct. It's yep. increasing those two lines because they will both increase if these resolutions pass, but there will be no additional cost. I right. second. second for the amendment. So just I second it. And change uh, treasurer to finance. Correct. The same, the same thing. Further discussion? Not all those in favor, aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Sorry, thank you. Uh, that's it, sir. Mike. Okay, we got one thing left to do, which is to adjourn. Unless somebody no, else. I no. Pledge. Pledge two. Pledge two. Oh. Let's go. Oh, we have another page. Can just do an all in favor um, of the resolution as amended? Oh, yes. Yes. Aye. 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 Well, thanks. <laughs> so there's some a uh, little something extra for Amanda. Okay. <laughs> um, no, there's um, next to appropri appropriating five hundred thousand of the American Rescue Plan uh, to nonprofits in Cuba counties. Oh, uh, is there a motion? Um, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, this is open for discussion. Uh, Jim? Yeah, um, so I, I I have a copy of all of what, what I think we've done so far and uh, what's, what's left in the outside replace revenue loss and what's in the place reverend loss and uh we haven't addressed funding for a couple of things like broadband or the building fund and so forth um I, I, and obviously we'd like to help everybody but i i think at this time i'd either like to table this till a later date or um for right now i would have to vote no if we don't to bring this up till we address a couple other issues that I think are critical with the funding that's left. You're moving to a table? I'd, I'd like to table it till we address. Oh, you're not on the committee, okay. 
Okay. That, that or I will, I will vote no at this time. Okay. Motion to table. I'll second the motion to table. Who first? Jeff. 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 He's on. He's on the he's on committee. He is on. He's the alternate. At large. Or at large. Or at large. <laughs> or at large. <laughs> You're in the batter's <laughs> box. I'm the batter's box. <laughs> <laughs> large good. Can I just ask a question? At this point in time, you're. You want to make sure there is enough funding left for some of the other programs that are appropriations that you are looking at broadband or some other initiatives. I, I would hope that all of us are looking. No, no, no. At, I realize yeah, that, yeah. but from your point of view, that's yeah. this is not that you're not in support of the five hundred thousand. To if there is the funds available, then yes. But you want to make sure there are we, the funds we hit a, is it that we hit a couple other items be, before we get down to that. Point where we think we <clears throat> think we've addressed everything as a group. That's my opinion. There's a couple open items, and then yes, you know, being no discussion on tabling, so oh. uh, we we'll proceed to vote. The table is aye or yes. Aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed to tabling? I oppose. One, two. Okay, I guess it's carried. So the tabling is carried. So it's tabled. Motion to adjourn. Wait, we got. I think. Oh. No, that's it. There's one more. WM3 been already taken care of. Yeah, that was the first thing we did. Your first one. That was this one. What are you looking at? What's the I second the adjourn. Okay, I guess so all those in favor of adjournment. Aye. All right. Aye. Great. Thank you. Good adjourn. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for having me. Mindy, I got a. Excuse me. Good night.